This is the WMD Synchrodyne, and I'd like to give you a quick introductory video on how to use it. So, first of all, you have the three stages, the filter, the phase lock loop, and the VCO. In order of use, the VCO controls the PLL, which controls the filter's cutoff frequency. The filter input has the filter section has an input, a VCA CV, and attenuator knob, and this knob acts as the level control if there's no cable plugged in here. Resonance CV and resonance bias level. The VCA on the front end before the filter has an optional wave folder accessible by this switch. Uh, VCA mode is down, wave folder is up. The filter has internally a 50 to 1 cutoff ratio or a 100 to 1 cutoff ratio from the input frequency from the PLL to what the actual cutoff frequency is of the filter. Additionally, it works in high pass, band pass, and low pass. The filter outputs are down below here. Standard filter outputs 2 pole, so minus 12 dB per octave, 4 pole, minus 24 dB per octave. These two, 2PWF and 4PWF, are wave-folded outputs. They are separate wave folders from this one. They are on the output stage for added tones and lots more grit. The VCO is normaled to the phase lock loop input. When the phase lock loop is set up as a frequency multiplier with multiply by 1, 16, and other factors of 2 up to 1024, by integers 2 through 9 and divide by integers 2 through 9. So you can get a lot of different combinations of input frequency to output frequency. To listen to the output frequency, PLL out, which is the same as our PLL input. And this is just a rising ramp from maths. So here is what's going into the PLL, what's coming out. You hear the slew because that's a phase lock loop reacting and the track speeds all the way down so you can speed it up it's a little unstable at low frequencies adding damping changes the slew and slows it down but it stabilizes in a different way going all the way up will kinda lock the frequency unless you turn the track speed all the way up in which case these two circuits will fight each other and create some interesting pulse width sort of strange sounds. And the phase delta output is the same as the input but going through the the multiplication stage but the actual output frequency of this is not multiplied. It responds to tracking speed and damping as well. But it doesn't change as this changes in terms of frequency. So the main use of this is with the filter. We're going to put the filter, there's no input right now. We're going to run out the four pole output, turn the resonance all the way up, and turn the speed up enough so we get self oscillation. So this is a filter, four pole, self oscillation, 100 to 1, if we go to 50 to 1, it doubles the frequency. So at higher multiplications, the PLL becomes more unstable and takes longer to stabilize because it's dividing in the multiply section by a lot more, dividing internally so the output is multiplied. So there's a time lag where you get phase delay and phase modulation, which can be really interesting. You usually won't hear it unless you turn the tracking speed all the way up. The damping circuit will stabilize this. Oh, 
And these two will fight each other as they approach 10. Now the divide circuit is not inside the loop. So it doesn't respond to the tracking speed and damping, but brings the frequency out in a stable way. Now the influence control will affect directly the tracking speed and damping circuit. They're all summed into the a node on the PLL. So they are, these three controls all work together. So if we get a stable tone, and the influence does not go down to zero because it's a current input. So if we take our mass and turn it down, we're still affecting it. So that's how the PLL can be used to control the filter cutoff frequency. It controls it directly with the clock, giving you some really interesting, strange tones.